Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for this uh, honor to be here at SAGES. Uh, so today my kind of topic about uh, laparoscopic uh, repair of peripheral peptic ulcer, as you can see. Uh, just kind of our disclosure. Kind of. So as we know, uh, peptic ulcer disease is a common uh, disease we encounter and the perforation that can happen with that is associated with high morbidity and mortality. And over the years, kind of the, the, the management evolved, and kind of we started with the open, but can now kind of with the, this, uh, we're trying to introduce laparoscopic or minimal invasive approach. So in 1990, the first uh, laparoscopic uh, suture repair of periphery peptic also was performed, and at that time, the conclusion that it's uh, safe to be done in selected patients, which is patients that present early, like within 24 hours, and uh, if they are hemodynamically stable, also kind of they have small perforation. Later on, more studies can uh, uh, show that uh, it is associated with the uh, mortality about 6% and uh, conversion rate about 12%. And uh, furthermore, can there's a meta-analysis later on showed that the success rate was reported to be 85%. And at that time, can they found that it's associated with reduced wound infection and uh, pain, and, uh, but can it was also associated with increased uh, reoperation and leakage. So, and at that time, that was uh, contributed to the fact that suturing uh, laparoscopic was difficult and there's a learning curve need to be uh, adapted and uh, tra training need to be done before we can do that. So in this study, we compared short-term outcomes before, between uh, laparoscopic and open uh, techniques in, uh, in uh, repair of perforated peptic ulcer our, at our institution. And uh, this was retrospective uh, study. Uh, we included all the patients uh, uh, admitted to our institution which diagnosed with peripheral peptic ulcer uh, disease between 2016 and 2021. Uh, and they had a clinical and uh, radiographical uh, diagnosis of peripheral peptic ulcer. We included data, uh, uh, the data that were included in our analysis were kind of preoperative uh, demographic uh, characteristics, uh, comorbidities, uh, interoperative details, and also short outcome, uh, outcomes after surgery, like mainly in hospital uh, after they are done with the surgery. For the laparoscopic group, uh, uh, so all these cases were performed by single surgeon, and this surgeon did not contribute to any of the cases in the open group. And uh, there was no conversion in any of these cases. And uh, these patients, can, if they can, after station, they were kind of stable and qualify uh, for the, the, the laparoscopic or telluric pneumoproteinium, we took them to the OR for that. All these patients, regardless of which approach we picked, they had a preoperative uh, preparation with the NG tube replacement, Foley catheter, IV antibiotics, IV fluids, and, uh, and uh, IV PPI. Uh, so, just kind of to clarify about the techniques here, kind of just uh, to go over the terminology because it changed and uh, there's sometimes confusion about it. So, Seal and John, kind of, which was first was introduced in 1929, it was essentially patching the perforation with the pedicle momentum, and there's no closure of the primary defect or the perforation. Uh, Graham kind of repair, you know, which was in 1937, it was the uh, same thing, but they used a free flap or momentum flap to do the same way. The more modern way that we know, the modified technique, uh, as you are aware of that, which we use the suture to close the defect primarily and use the same suture to uh, tack the uh, tongue of momentum over that area, which could be free or could be a uh, pedicle. Our technique is a little bit different, so can, as you see here, can we access this laparoscopic, we uh, suction all the collections, uh, define the perforation, as you can see here, can uh, picture A, it was relatively small perforation, so that was closed primarily with a 3 0 silk, and the suture was cut. Then we applied the seal, then we used a new set of sutures to uh, kind of take seromuscular stitches uh, around uh, the edges of the perforation where it was closed and use it to suture or kind of uh, tie it over the tongue of the momentum over that area. So it's kind of different modification we did. So in our study, we included 49 patients, 47% uh, were male. Uh, mean age was uh, uh, 53, uh, mean BMI 25, and ASA class was a three or higher in uh, roughly 76%. Uh, smokers were about 76% uh, of these patients, and NSAIDs, report, uh, NSAIDs intake was reported in 27%. Shock was present in 12% of these patients. Uh, duodenal perforation, as expected, was the most common side of perforation, uh, 57%, and the average size was between one to two centimeter in uh, 
about 73% of these patients. So we had 16 patients in the laparoscopic group and uh, 33 patients in the open group. And as I mentioned, one surgeon did uh, 16 patients in the laparoscopic did not contribute to the open and the open was kind of two different surgeons did not contribute to the laparoscopic group. This is kind of table showing the preoperative characteristics for these patients. So not much of statistical difference between the two groups except tachycardia to presentation, which was more common in the open group, but kind of after the resuscitation, everything was normalized. So, and looking also at preoperative uh, uh, workup, kind of CT scan was obtained more in patients uh, uh, who uh, underwent to open uh, technique. But the other kind of items and other kind of variables were not statistically significant. So looking at our outcome, so for patients who underwent a laparoscopic approach, they had favorable outcome in the, in the multiple aspects. So looking at NG tube uh, removal, it was removed uh, in the first, uh, in post of day one or two, in uh, most of the, in, uh, about 87% of these patients versus 24 patients, 24% patients in the, uh, of the patients in the open group. And early resumption of diet in 63% versus 9%. Per, uh, 9% and early kind of return of bowel movement in 44% uh, versus 9%. Also, narcotic use was lower, kind of, which was kind of less than three days in the laparoscopic group in uh, roughly 58% of these patients versus 6%. Uh, length of stay, as expected, was lower, 3.7 versus 16.1 uh, days. The uh, length of procedure was longer, kind of laparoscopic. Uh, it's, uh, it was 117 minutes versus 86 minutes. Uh, in the uh, open group. Uh, overall, morbidity and mortality, can I, it was not statistically significant, but can you see the trend that uh, morbidity was lower, kind of 12.5% versus 39%, and uh, mortality, we did not have any mortalities in the laparoscopic group, and 6.1% uh, in the uh, open group. So in conclusion, we can uh, conclude from this study that laparoscopic feasible even in patients with high risk profile, like they have high SA, uh, class or kind of they have large ulcer or they have multiple comorbidities at presentation. And I can uh, see from this study that uh, the outcomes postoperatively uh, were kind of encouraging because kind of like as you see less uh, pain, uh, uh, the pain is uh, less, uh, less use of uh, narcotics, earlier return of bowel movements and early discharge. The other thing we can have in our favor that we have a good follow-up system even can in in uh, like the area that we have, we have a poor compliance from the patients, but kind of with the phone calls and uh, keeping and uh, tracking these patients, we're able to get them back to the clinic and follow up with them. So that maybe help us with a shorter length of stay than uh, what's reported before. And also, can, uh, as you can see, it reduce uh, complications, including ileus and uh, infections. Limitations, it's a single uh, uh, center study and single surgeon did all the laparoscopic procedures. It was a small sample size as well, it was retrospective design. And also the technique was different, so for the open group, uh, the surgeons used uh, gram or modified gram uh, patch repair versus uh, the laparoscopic, we used the modified technique that I described earlier. These are my references, and thanks so much.